Hi, hope you're well. In this video, we are going to be having a look at making a simple wireless connection between two breadboards. In this first image, we can see a transmitter. This particular transmitter has three prongs. The left prong says GND by it, which means ground. The middle prong says VCC, and the right prong says data. This transmitter will slot into a breadboard. The next image is a receiver, and this piece of kit will receive a message from the transmitter. This particular receiver has four prongs. The left prong is VCC, then the two middle prongs are data, and then the right prong is ground. Here is a reverse shot of the receiver. This receiver will also slot into a breadboard. Here is the three pronged transmitter slotted vertically into a breadboard. It must be slotted vertically into the breadboard, not horizontally. The breadboard has four columns as well as a bottom section which I'm not using. Underneath the holes are bars that run horizontally across in rows. The three thin long holes, ditches if you will, are where these lines of bars break but you can connect them by using a wire if you wish. In this image we can see the transmitter breadboard has been set up there is a white wire that is connected to the horizontal bar that is also connected to the GND or ground prong of the transmitter. This white wire is then connected to one of the top holes of the breadboard. See that black thin line? That is the negative strip. It, re it reaches all the way along the length of the breadboard from left to right. The white wire is connected to it. I didn't have to use a white wire. It could have been any colour. Now, the next prong, the middle prong, is the VCC prong of the transmitter and it has a yellow wire attached to it. This wire is connected to the red section at the top of the breadboard. That, this is the positive section. That, thin, that red thin line is broken into strips at the top of the breadboard, but as you can see, there is a very thin yellow wire which is connecting those two red sections together. I didn't have to do that because I am not using the left section of the thin red strip anyway. Now again, both wires just so happen to be yellow. I could have used any colour, doesn't matter. Now the right prong of the transmitter is the data section and you can see a blue wire attached to it and this blue wire stretches up to the red section at the top of the breadboard. Also in this image you can see a light grey wire. This light grey wire is also attached to the data prong of the transmitter. In this closer image we can see that the grey wire is attached to the bottom right hand corner of a small round button switch. The top left corner of the small round button switch is the red wire that is connected to the battery holder. The black wire section of the battery is attached to the black negative section at the top of the breadboard. Now for the receiver. Similar to the previous breadboard, we see wires of different colours that are attached to certain sections of the breadboard. Like the previous breadboard, the GND or ground prong of the receiver has a wire, blue, going to the black section at the top of the breadboard. Then it has another blue wire stretching over to the right hand side of the little red light. The little red light or LED has a round side and a flat side to it but you have to get close to see that. The round side is on the left and it is the positive side of the LED. The flat side is on the right hand side of the LED and is the negative side. And that is why the blue wire that is connected to the right hand side of the LED is also connected to the ground prong of the receiver because the ground prong is negative and that is why the other blue wire which is connected to the ground prong of the receiver is connected to the black ground section at the top of the breadboard because it's negative. The small red wire is then connected to one of the data prongs on the receiver and the other end of the small red wire is then connected to the left round positive side of the little red light. The light grey wire is connected up to the VCC prong of the receiver and is then connected to the red positive line at the top of the breadboard and you can see the tiny red wire which is connecting up the two red lines at the top of the breadboard. I didn't have to do that, I could have just connected the light grey wire to the top left red line at the top of the breadboard, but I just did it that way as part of the setup. And then finally, the battery holder 
is just connected at the top to its corresponding red and black parts. Now let's give it a try. As you can see the red light is coming on as I am pressing the button so it has worked fine. And then this final image is just to show you a simple quick way of how everything should be connected up. Thank you very much. I hope this video was useful. Bye.